I wake up this morning and what do I see? I see another email response to uh, your apparent, you know, alleged drug use to become the super bodybuilder that you are. And I know that you're not. You know you're not. You've been tested by the NPC. Multiple times. Multiple times. Year after year. Year after year. And uh, and your last compet competitive uh, deal was what, 2003? 2003 in August. In August. And still, the debate rages on <laughs> that you are this, you know, steroid... Uh, Liar, induced, cheater. Yeah. So, uh, I figured that, you know, it's like five in the morning. <laughs> you know, well, now, now six after we got set up to set the record straight once and for all and maybe go through some of these... Emails. I mean, the, I mean, literally, some of these emails are almost to the point where, uh, and these are postings, not emails. Yeah. That that, I mean, almost slanderous. Yeah. If I saw this guy in the grocery store, I wouldn't look twice. Now juice up and get big. <laughs> it's a pretty typical. Yeah. You know? In fact, that one's actually nicer than a lot of them uh, uh -huh. that you might see. And you know, I don't. Again, people are titled entitled to their opinions, and I don't really look too much into it. I don't know this person, so I, I can't really comment directly. Um, I just I just think it's unfortunate that people are so quick to uh, put a limiting factor on what can be achieved and what can't be achieved, because ultimately all they're doing is hurting themselves, especially if it's someone who's aspiring to be a great uh, natural bodybuilder. You know, myself, for example, when I was before I won the first national level show when I was working really hard to, to get up to that teen universe level, you know, I looked to people who were successful at the teen universe level and I wanted to learn from them because they were better than me. I didn't look at them and instantly doubt, oh, they're, they're so much better than me so they must be cheating. No, I looked at them and said, what, what are they doing that I'm not doing because I want to be like they are. If I would have looked at those people the same way that a lot of people look at me and just doubted them, and you know who knows i you know I, I certainly wouldn't have had went on to have the career that i had but instead i learned from people who were better than me so i guess you know at the end of the day you, people are entitled to their opinions i just wish that they wouldn't limit themselves so much um, did you know that even in natural bodybuilding competition competitors still juice they just have to stop juicing before the contest so they don't get caught with it that's a pretty popular one and there's a lot mm -hmm. of um you know, I competed the main show. I mean, I did. Uh, I won the team universe three times, class my class three times, and the overall one time in 2003, and that's how I uh, got my IFBB pro card. And there's a lot of uh, you hear a lot of scuttle that oh, the team universe that's just a farce, and you know the people are still taking drugs and that. And there's ways to get around it. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody who enters the show, and I I wouldn't claim to do that. Uh, but, you know, um, your polygraph tested and then the top two have a urinalysis test. Again, are there ways to get around it? I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, I never did. And I was tested, uh, I won it in 99 and I won it in 2001. And then I won the overall in 03. And then I was also in it in 97 and 98. So, I mean, all these years I was polygraphed and or urinalysis tested and never failed any of them. Um, Again, I, I just think it's an easy way out. I think it's an easy excuse to, to just blanket it and say everybody's you know, doing it. Are there some that enter the show that are trying to cheat? Probably. I'm not going to say that. I don't know. But it's, it's not fair. It's, it's too easy to just blanket it and say that everybody who's doing it is. You know, I don't know if that takes um, onus off the own person for their own lack of what they've done. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't really know that. But I just, I'm thankful I didn't do that, and a lot of other great natural bodybuilders didn't do that, because if I would have taken that same thing, I would have limited my own progress and my own career. And you know what's funny, too, is now here I am. Last time I was on stage was, I guess, posed in April of 04. And, um, you know, since then I've, you know, built the business and spent time in renovating the building, and now it's been three years, three and a half years in operation. But I still train Maxwell T, and I still, and not as meticulously or not as intensely, but... You know, now that I'm getting ready for this guest posing, um, I still look pretty good. And I think that's a testament to if I was on all these drugs and then I stopped taking them and I did all this, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, you're never going to convince. I guess the bottom line is that my job isn't really to try to convince people because if it's in their mind 
and they've already you know, believed that to be the case, and that's what they're going to believe. So my job isn't really to convince people, but it is to create an example for those that want to follow. So I try to send, I don't really care the people who want to uh, take the, the negative approach and go that way. That's their prerogative, and I don't really worry about them. But for those that want to listen and follow, that's really what I feel my message is for now. And so with the DVDs I'm coming out with and with the different instructional material, that's focused for people who want to learn. And if they want to learn, information is there. And if not, you can still have your opinion and, and do your attacks, but you know, I don't see the need to take it to a personal note. All right, so uh, here's, a, here's a question for you. Um, for guys that, um, that uh, you've competed against in the past mm -hmm. that are now you know, top pro bodybuilders, and we're talking about top, top. top way at the top um, so it'd be it would be uh, natural to assume that if you were taking uh, steroid steroids to get into the co competitive level that you were at that maybe you know why why didn't you become you know a uh, mr. Olympia uh, competitor I mean if, if these guys were taking them and then look how big they are now and what happened to you? Well, that's a good that's a good point. I mean, and and I can use this as a direct example. In 1993, I competed in the Teenage Nationals, in, in North Carolina, and people can look it up online and see who else competed in that. But also, there were other guys that year who went on to be uh, pros and then top professionals. And but you can see the difference in, for example, like their weight gain and their physique progressions over those 10 years. And I'm not condemning anybody for any choices they made. I'm just saying you can compare physiques and see the changes that they made, the amount of weight that they gained over the years. And then you look at me there, competed as a light heavyweight, took fifth at 19. Ten years later, I win the Team Universe overall, but I was still a light heavyweight. Now, granted, my physique was dramatically different, more mature, muscle, more hardness and definition, just more years of training, but not a huge increase in, in body weight. And if you really look at it, not... You're not talking, you know, I went from that, at that point competing in the light heavyweights to then being, you know, 230 on stage. No, I still competed at 198 or weighed in under 198 for the, for the team universe. So I guess what you're, what you're looking at is um, it's not that unrealistic to think that if someone works really, really hard for 10 years or more, their physique's going to get more. And, and they learn more about nutrition and you learn more about training and more about to do things most advantageously naturally. It's not that unrealistic to think that you could improve your physique that way. So if you look back at the photos, you're not seeing a huge change in total weight gain, which I think would be more indicative of someone who was using chemical assistance. Okay. Part one, I'd just say I'm sorry that you're so limited in your, in your scope, and I'm sorry that you're so limited in your vision because it's going to limit you in this and probably limit you in all aspects of your life. Uh, part two, for those that uh, want to learn, I say, you know, the information is there. And do like I did. You want to model yourself after someone. And this, is, I think, is true in any uh, scope of life. You want to model yourself after somebody who's been successful. Don't reinvent the wheel. Learn things that they did to help you out, to help you achieve. And that's, that's what I did, you know. And uh, you, you always want to make sure, and I want to say this, too. I want to be very clear. My whole career, I've never been on a pedestal about being natural or thought I was better than anybody because that, no, that's just the way that I've chosen to do it. And anybody who chooses to do it other ways, that's fine, that's your choice. But just make sure that you're learning from sources that are relevant to you. If you do want to be a drug-free bodybuilder, make sure you're not taking advice from someone who isn't because it's not going to be as relevant to you. You need to learn from somebody who is also drug-free so the methods that you're using are most relevant to how you want to achieve. At the end of the day, you have your own personal choice to make. I made my choice and that was to be a great bodybuilder, the greatest that I could be, but I wanted to remain drug-free and work to achieve it that way. Again, it's your own individual choice, but make sure that who you are learning from is relevant to how you want to go about doing it.